Welcome to this tutorial from Dublin Free Co op about creatively reusing single use materials. The first of our three projects is to make seedling pots from toilet rolls. You can take any size toilet roll, flatten it in one direction, squashing down the seams with your fingers on both sides. Now open it up again and flatten it on the opposite sides. So you're creating four seams all together. You take your ruler and a pencil or a marker and about a third of the way up from the bottom, mark a straight line. This is going to be your guideline that you are going to cut up as far as in a few minutes. Here I'm just marking it all the way around so that it's the same distance the whole way. Now take a sturdy scissors and cut up as far as the line you just marked. You're going to do this for each of the four seams. So you've created four flaps like at the bottom of a cardboard box. So now you're going to take each of those flaps and fold them along the lines you've drawn. You're going to do each one in turn so that there's a, a little fold made for each one of them. Now when I did this one I realized that I made them a little bit too long so they wouldn't fold easily. But that's easily fixed. So I just chopped off about a centimeter of each one to make them the right size. Whichever size you prefer depends on your toilet roll. So now you fold down each of the, the flaps one at a time and when you get to the last one, fold your last corner in under the first corner. And that kind of makes a little secure pot. It's like a little cardboard box in miniature. Fill it with soil and add some seeds. These ones are from Irish Seed Savers and they're Siberian Kale. Seed savers are a great uh, group to, to support because they grow heritage Irish seeds and they're organic as well. So here I'm using my pencil as like a little dibber and I'm going to put in three seeds. Then cover them back over with soil once they're in. After a couple of weeks, you get a little seedling. And then you can take this and plant it in a window box or in a pot or a raised bed outside. You can put it straight into the ground in the new little pot you made. The second project is finger puppets. These are gonna be made out of egg boxes. So I started by drawing a couple of rough sketches for patterns I'd like to make the puppets to be. So I picked four animals and they were foxes, a fox, a mouse, a pine marten, and a badger. So egg boxes are something that you can reuse if you shop somewhere like the co-op where you can refill instead of having to buy a new box every time, but eventually they do get a bit worn. So over time they're going to break down a bit and this is a great way to use up older boxes. So I'm starting by taking a pencil and marking out the two faces I'm going to cut out of this box. Each box will give you two faces. So the faces have a nose and two ears. And here you can see the ear and the face. And then to get the second one, turn it the other way around and get ear, a face, and another ear. Now take your big scissors again and start to trim away the excess cardboard. The egg boxes are quite tough because they have to be pretty sturdy to mine the eggs, but um, with a little bit of persuasion, they can come away pretty easily. Now I took a smaller knife, which is also, or scissors rather, which is also still pretty sharp, tough, 
and I'm just trimming away more of the edges to, do, to reveal the little face shapes I want to make. You can start to see the first face emerging. This one's going to be a little nest, so that's why I've cut the ears in that little shape there. The second one is going to be the pine marten, so I'm going to leave the ears a little more three-dimensional to give them a nice kind of shape, because I think that will add character. Now you can see the badger and the fox that I've cut out as well. So it's really the shapes of the ears that give them the definition and the character. So you can play around with that and decide which kind of animals you'd like to make. I'm going to be painting these with a mixture of acrylic paints and then actually some old house paint that's like a little, a little tester house paint that uh, kind of thing you might have in the garage because you can use um, these are good paints for this type of card and um, stuff like watercolors won't work as well because it needs to be quite highly pigmented and it will absorb a lot into the cardboard so you want a kind of thicker paint the brushes I'm using are it's quite stiff bristled brushes and that's the house paint I'm going to reuse. So I just start by mixing up the colors. You might have maybe poster paints or acrylic paints that are already the colors you want, so in which case you won't need to mix your own. So I'm just starting it by painting and I mix up a little bit more color to get to a kind of warmer brown that I want. So like this, I go through all the little characters I want to make giving them kind of different different eyes and different noses and painting their ears and the patterns. That way you can see the little fox's head and they're quite big on the inside for finger puppets so if you want you can alleviate that by just putting a little bit of tissue or card especially for kids, that way it will fit anyone. And there you have your four little faces. And our last project are large plant pots. So we get these large 5 liter or 25 liter containers that we use for our zero waste section for things like shampoo, conditioner, house cleaners. So at the end we have these large containers left. So I'm going to cut along the line that's at the top of the container. The plastic already has a kind of its own line from the way it's been formed. I'm going to use this sharp knife. You want it to be sharp and you want it to, you want to be careful with it, but it's better to be careful with a sharp knife than use a blunt knife. You can also use tape uh, to kind of mark it out for yourself if you think you'd like a more obvious guideline. So I start by going around scoring the line. I, I went over this, I think, three times. Um, so just kind of gradually scoring through and eventually on the third go I cut my way through and it was quite safe and easy that way. So I took it off and then made some little guide holes in the end with the knife and then punched these through a bit more with a screwdriver. You could also do this with the drill but I wanted to find a way that didn't necessarily require a drill because I think most of us probably have a screwdriver. So those are our drainage holes for the plant, plant that's going to go in. So it's quite a sizable pot, it's uh, really handy to use. And then you can plant it up like this. So that's the smaller pot that you can see in the front, the one that I just was making there. And then behind it I have two larger pots, both um, about five times the size of the first pot. And they have been used, one is used upright and one is on its side. And they've had panels cut out in a similar way. So you can see some of our chives and raspberries and some salads that I've grown from the co-op and the seeds we sell there. And you can see you can kind of decorate them. I've decorated that one with an old coffee bag or you can paint them as well. So that's our tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you really enjoyed it and we hope you have a great time at Dublin Maker Festival and uh, make sure to come visit us in the co-op in Kilmainham or check us out on social media or at our website dubbinfood.com